Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and Commander. This is the Situation Report, the SIP wrap for the day of 828 to 829 for the 31st of May to 1st of June. There is no information from the 2nd of June, which is as per this recording, uh, because if I drop it in, then uh, the whole report, the SIP wrap, I can don't record already. I can just record tomorrow. Uh, which is not good uh, because then the information get very conflicted. So anyway, uh, the frontline changes report has already been out. So you no, know, do check it out. I have also published the delayed telecast around half an hour ago on the main channel as per this recording. So uh, it's already quite late now in Ukraine. Let me check what's the Ukraine time now. Uh, it's already in the evening. It's a six forty six p.m. already. So you no, know, like I mentioned the, uh, the. If there is nothing on today's uh you know, the second of June's information. So so I just want to take note. Uh, so don't tell me oh, you're so late, you're so slow, what because I need to sleep. So anyway, uh the front uh we can start off with the Kharkiv front. So at the Kharkiv front, uh Russian uh Kharkiv Kharkiv offensive, as I mentioned, is already e essentially over. Uh it's just now skirmishes, just like all the other front lines. And uh, the Russian forces are fighting over at the no northern part of uh, Lip Lipsy. They are attacking on Nishkushne and the fight the battle of first chance continue. So uh, there is uh, the Ukrainians also counter-attack at studies here. Uh, so that's one that's a thing. And uh, there's a lot of uh, shelling reports from the Russian Defense Ministry, which is unusually a lot. Uh, we have shelling report over at Kutuzivka, Shetaskove, Zamulivka, as well as Yuschenkove. Basically, there's a lot of strikes on the rear positions. I'm not sure what are these because these are just reports from the Russian Defense Ministry. So you have these attacks and then you can count the attack over at Stelisia and Voschans. So this is the strategic situation right now over at the Kharkiv front. And uh, there's nothing really to talk about in the Lipsy sector. The fighting is still being reported to be in the north, according to Ryba. Uh, Nekushne is interesting. Uh, this is reported by the Russian Defense Ministry about an attack in this area here. The fact that they use Nekushne uh, could suggest they have Zelene. Or this could, this could just be a shelling report uh, no, from the Russian side. Ukrainians are still struggling to hold back the Russians as that is here. And uh, at the Battle of Voschans, the, the kill box continues to operate. Uh, as you can see, the dual locations are ridiculous right now. These are, this is a guided bomb strike, guided bomb strike. This is an airstrike, another airstrike, airstrike. So the Russians are basically using air power and just hammer the Ukrainian forces that is trying to push out from this, uh, from this uh, salient. And the uh, Russians are just happily just, just hammering them with airstrikes. And this is exactly what I'm trying to, I have, I have been trying to say, you know, this is kind of a disastrous thing for the Ukrainians because you can do the ground offensive, but you, when you do not have air support or air defense that can you know, prevent your enemy from striking you, uh, with air support, then you're going to lose a lot of men. And uh, this is looking really, really horrible. And there's also other Joe location, like a Lancet strike in the rear position. Another one, this is a air strike and another position. So, so you can see this is uh, ridiculous. The Russian forces are, are also you know, uh, getting hit by drones. Uh, this is a drone uh, dropping grenades on the, on the Russians. So another hit over there. This is the Russian troops getting hit, but you can see that in comparison, the number of footages came out that was geolocated is very lopsided. Um, and in the north, the Russians starting to do entrenchment. According to Deep State UA, the pro-Ukrainian source reported that they have destroyed one engineering uh, equipment over this position. However, uh, it does. Uh, in their report, they also say that it doesn't stop the Russians from continuing to do the entrenchment. Uh, so the Russians are here to stay. They they are they are already building trenches and whatnot. They're building defensive positions, so they're not leaving. So this khaki front is going to stay here for some time. So this is the situation right now uh, over in this area, and uh, further south, another geo location of a Lancet strike of a Ukrainian artillery. So this is becoming reminiscent of Bakhmut. The Battle of Bakhmut uh, was used by Wagner to draw out, draw in all the Ukrainian forces and wipe them out. So the Wagner is a bit different because they use a lot of prisoners, and uh, these are to them you know uh, soldiers that can be uh, dispensable. 
they can just you know, discard them. So they send them on very uh, suicidal missions and uh, draw in a lot, a lot of Ukrainian forces and uh, it resulted in the Ukrainians losing a lot of uh, combat capabilities. Uh, so now the Russians are doing their own way, not the Wagner way, but uh, it seems to be work working, in my opinion. It seems to be working. Uh, but of course, uh, for those that are pro-Russia, I also have to let you know, a lot of Russian soldiers die, even if they have all this superiority in uh, firepower. So no, don't don't celebrate people's dying. Um, there is your location of Lancet strike on the armored vehicle within Kharkiv itself, and another strike, another Lancet strike hitting a uh, Ukrainian uh, air defense system at the air base. So this is the current uh, situation right now where the Lancets are just flying in and looking for target within the city itself, which is crazy. The lack of air defense, you know, the lack of capability to add to, to prevent or stop Lancet uh, drones are ridiculous. So that's all from the Khaki front. We move into the Kupians front. At the Kupians front, uh, we have the Russian forces uh, fighting reported at Sinkivka towards Petropolivka. Uh, over here at the what is this location? I forgot Perestove, and uh, so uh, these are the various things. Ukrainian forces are located in multiple locations, getting airstrike. Uh, this is uh, some destruction of the Ukrainian artillery, artillery, and a guided uh guided artillery strike on the Ukrainian artillery, and uh, this uh airstrike or artillery strike. So multiple strikes on Ukrainian positions in the rear position. So this is quite scary. Uh, like the Ukrainians pull in the artillery and then they get destroyed. So, uh, quite scary. Uh, further south in the Svetobay front, there is Russian Joe located uh, in the Novo Silivsky region in the southwestern part of it. Russians are pushing in the southwestern part of Novo Silivsky, trying to push out, um, probably trying to reach this, this river over here. So, yeah, that's about it. There's nothing really to talk about that. Um, moving south, uh, there is fighting reported at Novo Yehorivka as well as Makievka. And uh, there is some uh, Russian uh, advance in the southeast of uh, Makievka, very little bit. Uh, There's just some invalidation of Ukrainian claims, but that's about it. Nothing really significant around here. Over the Kremlin front, at the Kremlin front, Russian forces are attacking Terny, Toske, Dibrova. Ukrainian forces attacking Dibrova as well. Russian forces attacking Krakorivka and shell Serebryanka. So this is the uh, strategic situation over the Kremlin front, geolocation location of uh, Russian shelling Ukrainian forces at Zarishne. And uh, I think that's about it. Uh, that's about it. I think uh, this is very reminiscent of the Kremlin front you know, last year. You no, know, A lot of fighting, but no, nothing changes. Moving uh, away from the Kremlin front, uh, further south to the Stevens front, uh, there is shelling being reported at Serbianka as mentioned earlier, Sivers as well as Kraiva Luka. Russian forces are allegedly attacking uh, Vimka. And uh, Ukrainian forces are located in the northern part of uh, Belorivka. And that's about it we have from this region. Uh, very uh, relatively quiet, I would say. Uh, further south to the Bakhmut front, in the northern flank, Russian forces are attacking Zelenyansky, Orikovo Vasilevka. Zelenina, Novi, Chasifia, Ivaniske, south of Ivaniske. So this looks like a serious expansion of operation uh, in the Bakhmut front. So the, the it seems like there is a big arrow here. Another big arrow, in uh, two big arrows around the same place. You know, one, maybe one giant arrow in that sense uh, in the Bakhmut front. So uh, but clear is that uh, the Russian forces are geolocated across the canal at Kalinina, showing that the Russians uh, either broke through, but I don't think so. They looks like you no, know, they it doesn't. They, they don't fight their way there. It feels more like the Ukrainians have bounced all out of Kalina, Kalinina entirely, and uh, they are just using drones to you know attack the Russian forces. There is no more ground troops. The ground troops seems to have redrawn. Uh, this is a. Uh, very similar to the report I gotten from my source on the ground uh, that is currently at Chasifia. Uh, he told me that uh, a lot of these uh, Ukrainian forces is now redrawing from Chasifia because they can no longer hold a position and uh, only the Krakens are there and uh, it's unknown if they are able to, uh, if they will redraw anytime soon because they tend to redraw very late according to my source. So uh, we will continue to monitor uh, if it's 
if he is right and there's no more truth defending, we might see the collapse of Chasifia you know, region very, very quickly. And it, it would be pretty pointless as well because the next front line will be Constantinica and uh, they still have to fight it. So this war, you know, is very stupid, uh, you know, uh, because the way how, of how the Ukrainians have to fight, try to delay action, you know, delay Russian progress. It seems like that's the only objective right now. You no, know, they, they can't really win the war. Uh, so that is kind of disastrous. Uh, over Novi, we also see the Russians are expanding in the northern part. And uh, they are trying to penetrate into the high-rise zone. I'm not sure who are defending over here. The Russians are struggling to get through into the high-rise uh, area in the Novi region. Geolocation location of a thermobaric strike in Novi uh, just shows you know, the disastrous uh, defensive position the Ukrainians will have to take uh, in this area here. There are further geolocation locations of uh, Ukrainian forces getting hit by Russian artillery as well as a Lancet uh, in Chasifia itself. So it's not looking good. So uh, over at the Ivaniske region, the Russians are also pushing. Uh, Joe location of Russian forces expanding in the southern part of Ivaniske, uh, continue to show the Russians tr trying to go through the southern flank, while the Russians are also putting pressure on Ivaniske itself. Uh, I mean, out of Ivaniske itself. So, uh, the Russians are moving in Bakhmut front. The Bakhmut front has now been uh, really, really activated. Moving uh, south, uh, south in the southern flank of the Bakhmut front, uh, there is fighting reported in the Klishevka region, Andriyevka and Kodyomivka. The claim of the capture of uh, Klishevka and Andriyevka is still not corroborated, so though it's getting a bit old already. 22nd of May, now we're already in June. So uh, we go into the New York front, and the New York front, uh, Ukrainian forces are attacking in the area of New York. Russians are attacking at Alexandro Alexandropil. So that's about it from the New York front. We move into the Andriyevka front. In the northern flank of the Andriyevka front, uh, we have the Russians attacking Novo Alexandrivka. They clash with the Ukrainian forces. Russians attacking towards Bogres. They are attacking towards Yehenivka, fighting in the region of Sokil. Uh, there is fighting reported at Solovyove. Ukrainians counter attack at Novo Borovsky. Russians attack towards uh, Novo Selivka, Persia. So, uh, this is cur the current strategic situation in this area here. Of significance, of course, is the frontline change in the Sokil region with the Russian forces now lining up the front line ready for a uh, attack from both sides uh ukrainian forces geo located uh according to the the report is a abrams tank so the rush the ukrainians are desperately defending this this line of defense uh with even the abrams so allegedly the abrams got destroyed i think according to the report defeat of the abrams with a fpv drone so we shall see how this develops Russian forces themselves are getting shelled by the Ukrainians, so it, it's not like it's not uh, just smooth sailing for the Russians. Moving further south, uh, in the southern flank, Russian forces are attacking out of a Semenivka region. They have lined up and uh, clear out this salient. The Ukrainian salient here is gone. The Russians have taken through, uh, have basically flattened the salient. There is still fighting reported in the Umanske region. There's a clash over there. Russian forces are pushing out of Netolove towards Kalivka over here the ukrainian forces uh have are geolocated at yasno brodivka uh and south of yasno brodivka north of kalivka all getting hit by U uh, russian uh, drones so fpv drone strikes all over the place so that's all from this region uh in the adf car front over at nevelske we also have fighting reported around here according to the ukrainian defense ministry on the 30 31st of may so but that's about it. I think the next salient to fall might be this one over at the Velske. This salient uh, is probably very hard to hold. I think this, the Russians will just uh, flatten it. So we move on from the NDFK front. Over the Donetsk front, Russian forces continue their battle of Krasnohorivka. Uh, they're fighting in the area of Novo Mihalivka, Konstantinivka. Uh, probably towards Vodian. Uh, there is fighting reported at Staromayovsky and Makarivka. Ukrainian forces counter-attack at Uruzaini. So uh, this is the strategic strategic situation over at the Donetsk front. There's nothing uh, much over at the Krasnohorivka except that uh, there is reports of the Russians continuing to fight uh, through two different directions, but no frontline changes reported. Uh, Georgievka, no more news. 
uh, over at this uh, Novo Mihailivka Konstantinivka region, there is report of fighting reported in the Novo Mihailivka region. I interpret this to be in the northern part uh, because all the other parts are already taken by the Russians. So I think the Russians are attacking in the north and uh, they are pushing towards Konstantinivka. So that's all from this area here. There's a frontline change over in the west of Solotke. So this frontline change is very minor, uh, but it does show the Russians are making this push towards Vodian from Solotke. The Ukrainians are attacked at Volodymyrivka. It's not reported. They are, however, attacking in the Velika Novosilka sector towards Uruzaine. Russian forces are continuing their Velika Novosilka offensive with fighting reported towards Uruzaine, Staromayevsky, and Makarivka. So, Joe location of uh, I think this uh, of the front line uh, basically at Uruzaine sh clearly shows uh, that the battles are still waging very fiercely over at this sector of the residential area. So that's all from the Donetsk front, and the, and the Zaporizhia front. Uh, things start to get a bit weird. Uh, the Russians seems to have started some kind of offensive in the Orykiv sector. I the previous week I have I did mention this once already but it was a false a, a false alarm uh, but seems like you no know, again we have the same kind of thing but this time out a, a lot more russians are attacking Malak malatomashka robotine towards novo denilevka to, towards novo andreevka and nestelianka region merne and there is frontline change reported in the north of merne or west of nestelianka so this is starting to look serious, uh, but of, of course, which is why I need to do this rep today because I want to see what develops on the scale of June. Uh, so if I merge everything in together, it's a bit harder to tell if it's a consistent attack. Of course, we can see through the dates, but this 31st of May, this is uh, 1st of June, this is 31st of May, 31st of May. So, so, so this all 31st of May, so this all reported on the same day. But if we have a separate report for the 2nd of June, probably we are able to tell better if this is actually a full flash offensive from the Russians on the older Kiev sector. So, but this is the strategic situation in this area here. It's looking uh, very precarious. Like I mentioned, the Kharkiv front is, you no, know, the Kharkiv offensive has done its job. It's a, the Kharkiv diversion has basically cause loopholes across entire Ukrainian front lines for the Ukrainians and uh, everywhere is starting to you know, shatter or started to crack and fracture. So the Russians are seemingly going to start to take advantage of all this. Russian forces are located in the area uh, of, this is south of Merne. Yeah, south of Merne in the Cherfine Ch region. Uh, this these are Russian forces are located in this position. Seemingly, they are making some kind of movement towards Sharifne, but we shall wait and see how this develops. And uh, there is also shelling being reported over at Stepnokhers, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. So that's all from the Zaporizhia front. Now, definitely we need to monitor this a lot. Joe location of a missile strike on Ukrainian uh, hydroelectric power plant. Uh, the Dnipro hydroelectric power plant has been struck. This is the second time I think I have reported this in the recent times. Uh, the last time, uh, the strike totally eliminated the the use of the power plant. Maybe the power plant was being repaired and the Russians you know, uh, tried to strike it again uh, to deny the Ukrainian uh, electricity in this area. We move into the southern front. Over at the Kherson front, uh, there is fighting reported at Krinky, uh, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry on the 20, 31st of May. And uh, there is shelling reported at Tiahinka, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. And uh, that's about it. Uh, there is a geolocation of an FPV drone strike on the Ukrainian boat south of Kherson. And that's about it. Uh, Kherson Front went very quiet. And uh, nothing at the Black Sea. So that's it. So this is the situation report or the SIP for the day of 828 for the 800 to 829 for the 31st of May to 1st of June. Press the like button, subscribe, commander. I'll see you guys in the next update.